Good morning, we are here indeed. It looks quiet this morning, both outside and inside in the stream here. Is it going to be a quiet day? That's okay, it suits me just fine. I'm ready for a quiet day. My email is not quiet. The email and the order box are not quiet this morning at all. Good morning again. Good morning, good morning. It's going to be a quiet uh, carving day today. Actually, there's some persuading to do, so it might not be so quiet. Oh, hello. Happy belated B day. Yeah, for you guys, I guess it's still my birthday. Yes. Thank you, thank you. 71. I think we stopped sort of counting long ago, but we did count. It's from City Hall, a memo from City Hall. They're asking me, please get on the website and sign up for my fifth vaccination. <laughs> it's, it's the notice for number five. And I know nothing about this. I haven't been following this now. The deal here, I guess perhaps we can see it. You tell me, I don't even know what this means anymore. BA1 and BA4.5. These must be variants of the virus, are they? So they're asking me to go and sign up for the uh, vaccination. I guess I will. I don't know. I don't. It's just, it, you know, maybe the first vaccination this is a couple of years ago, we were eager. Oh my God, I got this. I'm going to die. I got to get this vaccination. Can I log in? Can I log in? And now it's just become like, whatever. BA45 is Omicron. Is it? I don't know. No, of course I'm going to do it. Of course. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not a vaccine resistor. But it does get, what's the word? It gets to be like, Oh, whatever. Here we go. Do I need to do this? You know, interesting. Anthony, interesting. Part of also what makes it feel funny is that uh, we've had more people in the shop here now. One of the staff on Monday, she wouldn't want me to tell you her name. That person <laughs> wouldn't want me to tell you their name. Uh, got diagnosed positive on Monday, so we had to disperse for the next few days. She has stayed home for the rest of the week. I was in the room working with her all, all day Monday afternoon. There were four of us in the room. And Tuesday, she tested positive. So we've sort of been dispersed this week, trying to keep away from each other and stuff like that. But uh, And she was vaccinated uh, three times or maybe four times. I don't know. And she got it still. But obviously, she got it, but it's not deadly. Uh, you know, she's got a fever, I think, and that's it. So whatever. <laughs> Yes, I will get it, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> it's also a bit difficult because I can't do it here in Tokyo. I mean, I can't do it here downtown because my, my residence is Ome. I have to go out and do it in Ome. So it means getting online, booking it, and then uh, taking the day and getting out there. And the, the place where they do the vaccinations is nowhere near my home, so whatever. Okay, you can see where we're at. We're still chugging away. This is you know, blue number three. We'll probably be finished cutting this in a few minutes, at which time I will have to make some noise, some persuading. The knife seems sharp. I was going to say, do we need to sharpen? I'm, I'm doing so little actually actual work during these streams that the knife is, uh, is staying sharp. Other news have we? I don't really know. The shop here has been wonderfully busy. Wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully busy. It's going to be in the way. Asakusa has come alive. We don't know whether it's just a short-term thing because there's a whole bunch of people quickly in town or whether this is, it's back to normal. We don't know, but the shop has been wonderfully busy. It's good fun. It's good. It's exhausting sometimes, but it's good fun. The conversations sometimes get a bit long and over the top, but uh, people want to chat, and I want to chat. And uh... okay, let's do this. A 
If someone's thinking how long to carve a wood block, there is no absolute single answer, I'm sorry. Some of the blocks can be carved in a, in a, in a, a few minutes, literally. And some blocks are taking a long, long time. And all. This print, if I had had nothing else to do, if I was just concentrating on this print, we could have had the whole block set ready, I think, in probably about a week to ten days. The key block is very light. There's not many lines on it. The color count is not so heavy. The block that probably took the most time was the one with all the blues that, that you saw me cut here. This is not uh, an actual complex, difficult, long project print. A week or ten days would have done to do this. Proofing would have taken one afternoon, and it could have gone to the printers for the edition the next day. We could have had this whole thing start to finish up and running in a week. Um, whatever, two weeks really comfortably. Pushing, a week is probably too quick. Two weeks we could have had this up and running, start to finish. Where I am? Where am I? There's a noise, not sure if you've heard that one here before. We just set that up when we open this shop. That's the shop computer downstairs here. And we have a situation where we need to be able to alert the shop staff to something. And what that was is, you know, you know, you've got on my own computer. We've got this alert when there's a way a wave order comes in. I have it play a wave sound, whatever, just for fun. But yeah, somebody's got a coffee drinker here. Yes, it's a it's a notification. It means that something on the online shop, which is still in the shop here, has sold. And if this was like the shop normally during the day, people are browsing here. Somebody could be browsing and picking up a print that is also online. 
And if somebody in the shop here buys that print, and as soon as it goes beep in the cash register, the online web shop, anybody loading a page online, can't see that print because it's sold. But the other way around, if somebody buys something online, then we have to obviously alert the staff here, please get that print and take it out of the browser bins so nobody can see it. So that's what it is. It means just, just within the past few minutes, somebody has bought something online that is here in the shop. So there's been a bunch of those the last few minutes. We're probably going to hear more because we, we did a thing this morning. So the first job for the staff that are here this morning, it's Mori-san and Ken-san, I think, are here today. They're going to have to scuttle around and take all those things out of the shop. Tom 1060, paper is out. Paper is not out. There's no need for it. One of our printers is down. The other two were in the same room, so no printers are here at the moment. They won't be here today or tomorrow. They're going to get tested, and based on the test, they'll come back Monday morning, I think. Someone says, how often do we sharpen your tools? You may see sharpening this morning. I'm not quite sure. We sharpen when they get a little bit dull, which is actually every, every not every few minutes, but uh, on softwood like this, every hour or so, I would touch this up, but we just haven't been sh cutting enough, so... Plan the newsletter timing before the Twitch stream. No connection with the Twitch stream. That newsletter timing, because it was flea market this time, we are trying to be as fair as possible. I get so much grief from people on the mailing list. If I send a newsletter out with a flea market sale or something in it, there are people who are awake when it arrives and there are people who are asleep when it arrives. And we sometimes get grief from people who said, why did you send that out when we were asleep? 24 hours in the planet and I really can't send it out when everybody is awake because there isn't any time when everybody is awake. So we really struggle with this. We tried, what was it, a year and a half ago or so, we tried to do one of them where we split the prints into three groups, A, B, and C, and we sent one group when America, North America was awake, another group when Europe was wide awake, and another group when Australia was wide awake. And we still got people saying, hey, I missed that stuff, you know. I don't know what else I can do. These are one-off items. What can I do? So the, the, the point being, we sent it at a time when most of the planet is awake. That's why we do streaming at this time as well. Europeans are not happy because it's late at night, but at least they are awake. Uh, maybe. Ayano-san, you know, we, we, the ladies and I hear the girls and I here set this all up yesterday, you know. So I just pulled the trigger this morning. But uh, when Ayano-san left last night, she's off for the weekend, of course. She left here Friday and she won't be back till Monday morning. But she knew when she was leaving last night what we were setting up for, the, for today. So she knows when she gets here on Monday morning, she is going to have the mother of all inboxes. Okay, it's part of her job. Mm. The 
fourth quarter of the final World Cup game. <laughs> okay. Is there a reason for long nails? Actually, I just, it's whatever. There's a clipper around here somewhere. I should take my nail clipper to the pool. That would be the easiest way to do this. No, I'm just, it's, I guess I'm lazy. Actually, this is not too bad for me. They get a lot worse than this. I'm sorry. No, I used to play guitar. That was the thing then, but these days, no. What tune is that? You mean the music that's playing? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> we have. We've talked about this before, actually. We've talked about it before. We've talked about it before. Someone doesn't like my string. If only I had a knife. I can't cut the string because I got no knife to cut the string. It's like you can't find your glasses because you need your glasses to look where your glasses are. Hi, make you feel better? String is gone. <laughs> no, it's not the Sex Pistols. You, well, you wouldn't know because it's not a, a famous piece of music, but the guy, we talked about this before. The fanfare that we play here and a bunch of the scraps of music that are here and there in our mail system and on our website here and there. It's the, you know, my Story a Week website has recordings of many of the, uh, of many of the stories. Those of you who've been watching the Story a Week website when it was still alive, you know this. There's a piece of music that plays on each one of David's uh, recordings of the stories that are there. And the guy who wrote that music is the same guy who did this particular little fanfare. And it's the keyboard player for the Doobie Brothers. I was trying to remember his name. A guy, I've forgotten his name. It's so long since we talked about it together. one of the keyboard players for the Doobie Brothers. They've been rotating over the years. I don't know if he still is, I don't know. It's probably history now, I don't know. Now that I've said it, I've got to look it up to show. No, the party going on here, that's not that one. That's not it, Italy. Nope, nope, nope. It's not from that era, John. It's the post. And it's not when they were super famous. It's when they were touring, touring, touring all the time, and they hired a keyboard player to do the touring. One sec. I gotta, gotta, I'll get his name. It's on the Story Week website. One sec. I should have found uh, Whatever. Oh, it doesn't show anymore on the page. Guy Allison, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody knows more than I do. So the little fanfare there is by Guy Allison, along with this, the, the background music, the, more, the nicer background music for our Story Week website. And he and I did a, we did a, 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 a trade. He, he allowed me to use a couple of the compositions and I traded some woodblock prints for it. He was a, a he was interested in our, in our Surimono albums. So I gave him a bunch of prints from a Surimono album, and in, in exchange, he, he gave me the permission to use a bunch of the little compositions. I'm sorry not to have remembered his name, Guy Allison. I knew it was Guy something. Real nice guy. Wikipedia knows. Okay, <laughs> good. So, <laughs> do you do these streams within your work day, or do you use personal time for this? I don't. There is no such thing in my life as personal time, and I don't say this with any sense of, oh my God, I work so hard, I have no time left myself. 
Dave, just that's all I do here now. This business is all I do. I'm 71. I've got no family around, so I don't like have personal time. I get up in the morning. I woke up this morning at six, and by six or one, I was looking at emails and stuff. <laughs> but I don't say that in some sort of awful, terrible way. You know, this is just what I do. You know, it's what I do. At the end of the day, when there's finally, I'm just too tired to do this anymore. I lie down and go to sleep. <laughs> that's it. So. So this carving is just happening at the time of day when it's most convenient to do this. We do streaming before the shop opens. It's not convenient or, or practical to do streaming when the shop is open for a number of reasons. But the main reason we stream at this particular time is what I was talking about before with that email thing. We try and do it at a time when, the, the, when it's convenient for the largest number of, of people who are interested. And the Europeans uh, to hear me say that, and they're yelling it's not convenient for them because it's late at night. But you know, when you look at the global calendar, the global clock, this morning, morning for me in Japan is the time when most people are accessible. I used to also stream late in the afternoon Tokyo time, which was more beneficial for the Europeans to try and even things out. But it was just not possible. There's too many demands on me and my time in the late afternoon. So I could never be, uh, I could never guarantee that I was going to be here. By doing it this way, seven in the morning, I can pretty much guarantee that nothing's going on, nobody's going to bother me. I can be here and do this. In the beginning, we streamed twice a day, six days a week. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. It was just fun. There was only a dozen people so watching anyway, so it didn't much matter. But uh, you know. I see in the beginning, when we first used Twitch, in the early, early years, we were streaming with Ustream. That's a different story completely. But uh, when we started using Twitch five years ago or so, we tried doing it six days a week. So. That was fun. It's now just become part of life for me, you know, turning this camera on three times a week. It's Twitch streaming now is just part of life. On Saturdays, we should be aimed at the ninja boys. Yeah, I guess so, whatever. I just pointed it this way because uh, there was no sunshine coming down the road, you know. Ninja has been busy, as I said, because of the TV program they did some, was it a week ago, two weeks ago? They have been very, very, very busy. It's also, the ninja experience in the last week or so hasn't been all that smooth, actually. You know, they've got new staff. They've got a bunch of new staff. Excuse me just a second. <laughs> They've got a bunch of new staff, and the two guys who are doing the main drama are actually, from my perspective, they are not doing very well at it. They trained just uh, at the end of October, beginning of November, and they stepped into the roles and they've been doing it, but they are uh, they are overacting. They, after the first few days, they were kind of quiet, but then they got into the swing of things and they're overacting and they are scaring a lot of kids. And I think if it continues, like the boss, the guy who was doing it before, doesn't actually see this every day. He's trained these new guys, out you go, do your thing. And it's turning out that a lot of the kids are getting scared because these guys are overacting too much. They are stabbing and slashing with the stupid little plastic knives and they are doing it too much and they are too scary. And you know, it used to be like every now and then a kid would get scared and run for their mommy. Now, X times a day, some little kid is scared and running away and won't go back because it looks too scary. And I think the boss perhaps doesn't actually realize what's happening to his business, so uh, whatever. 
Is there a bass hum? Don't start again, please. Don't start again with noises and sounds and whatever. Is the awning a new thing? No, they just they left it open last night. It's the awning from the, the meat restaurant next door. And usually the girl, she closes it up before they, they close up. But she forgot last night, I guess. There's a hum since I sneezed. What? Here's the mic. If I touch it or don't touch it. Replug the mic. Come on, guys. I do not want to fix it. Microphones, audio, just audio. I want nothing to do with audio. When I held it, it fixed the hum. Well, that sounds like we've got a loose cable. And obviously, if you touch something and it stops and starts, that sounds like loose cable to show. <laughs> we got an alternative mic. This started to get old, so I bought a more expensive one. And you, when I tried this, you told me, no, no, no. So what can I do? This is a cheap common garden Sony mic that I've been using now for more years than I can care to think about. And if it goes down, we're down. Bluetooth home, Bluetooth. My God, don't talk to me about Bluetooth. We have so many problems with Bluetooth here. Ugh. We have nightmares about Bluetooth. The cash register communicates by Bluetooth to the barcode beeper. They don't connect because the barcode beeper has no cord, so it's Bluetooth. The cash register used to connect to the printer by Bluetooth, but it doesn't anymore because the two Bluetooths don't like to play together, so now the cash register plugs to the printer by cord. But when somebody pays by credit card, the cash register software gives it over to Square, and Square is connected to the printer by Bluetooth. And it's a nightmare. Every time somebody play, just, just, I do not want to hear the word Bluetooth. Yeah, let me know if it hums and I'll do something. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, enough, 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 enough. Back to work. It's really easy to make a mistake here, so I've got to sort of make sure I'm aware of what's going on. The red groups, the red groups. The red one comes up here, doesn't come up here. But this one goes farther than it should because just that's the way he did it. Next group, let's go. So what's this? We've gone five minutes without a shop sale there, without an online sale at the end of the world. The email check on that computer is every five minutes. It wakes up and goes to check the mail. It looks like all of these. Red, 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 red. That's red, this entire group. So that must be red also because it's part of this. The new people who work in the shop, you know, the people who we've been training over the past few months, you've seen some of them at the end of the streams. You've seen Akasaka-san and Ken-san had dropped in. The guys are coming out okay. They're, do they're doing all right. Uh, the easy part, like how to use the cash register and how to do the tax-free sales and the sort of the mechanical parts of the job, they've pretty much got this down now, and they're helping pack prints and do stuff like that. What, uh, what is not happening yet and really is going to take a long time 
is the ability to interact with the customers. You know, a customer comes in and looks at some prints and says, what's this? And that's where the new guys, the new staff, that's where they fall down, of course, because we're, we're talking about literally years and years of knowledge built up here to be able to talk to customers and explain stuff that's going on. So they're feeling a bit frustrated about this. You know, Ken especially, he's a, he's a conscientious guy, he's a really nice guy, he's trying hard. And it's a bit frustrating for him that he can't you know, deal that way with the customers. So for the moment, whatever, he's happy. He's doing the, the back stuff. I stand in front of the counter, talk to the customers. When they're ready to buy something, we pass it over to Ken. Ken does the processing, and I move on and talk to somebody else. You know? So it sort of works out well that way. But just how long it's going to take, if ever, for these guys to be able to be confident enough to, to work in the shop here like by themselves without me or another veteran person here. And this is a big problem for this kind of business, you know. And when you think about it, most sort of shop clerk type jobs, the shop clerk is there as a functionary. They don't have to really explain much, you know. When you're buying jeans, whatever, the, the clerk knows what jeans are and all they got to do is, what have we got in the stock room? How can I help you, you know? But in a woodblock print shop like this with a couple of thousand different prints of different topics and different themes and different things. A new staff member doesn't have a clue what's going on and it's it's a problem for us. You know? Tea shop, yeah, I guess so. If there's a, the more complex and the more detailed the product is that you're selling, then the more you know you have a problem. I guess in the case of the tea shop, ideally you'd try and hire staff, people that had their own interest in tea from a long time ago, so they already they're halfway there. They know what the stuff is, you know. Like try and hire one of your previous customers, you know, someone who knows what's going on. But in our case, just the, the number of people out there who have knowledge of Japanese woodblock prints, of course, it's, they just don't exist, of course, you know, so. It's not just that, it's even Dave here. I get in trouble with this, you know. The lady yesterday, there was a lady yesterday, she looking through the things and she picks up one of the prints from the Kabuki, a, a Kabuki actor or something, you know, from, from 18, nothing, 1820, whatever. And she says, what's going on here? So Dave here, I know woodblock prints, I know carving and printing, and I know the technical stuff, but you give me a random print from 1820, and I don't know who's on stage and what are they doing and what's the name of the actor, you know? So my knowledge of what's inside the prints is limited, so I just explain exactly that. I'm sorry, I don't know. We know the name because we can read the name here, but was this a high-ranked actor? What's the name of the play? What's going on? That's very, very specialist knowledge, which I don't have. And together we go to the computer and we Google it together, you know. So what she thinks, so she comes into the shop and the guy who's running the shop has to go to Google to find out what he's selling. You know, maybe she thinks, okay, okay, I'm out of here. I don't know. There's just no way that we as printmakers can have deep knowledge of the topic of every last single print that we sell here. So, you know. So just whatever, we explain the situation and uh, you know, we, we tell them what we know about the print. We certainly know about the provenance and the carving and the printing and what it is. But I cannot tell all the details of the actual image itself. You know. And there are people who are sort of disappointed by hearing this and people who, who understand and who get it. You know.
there's something else that's turned out kind of funny. And I'm, and I guess I can tell. See, that might be, is it an embarrassing story for me or not? I don't know. We sell in the shop also. We have copies of those, not copies, we have books. Books from the 1850s and 60s when it was very popular to do little dramatic novels in woodbot printed form. I did a YouTube video about this. It was David's Choice number six or something, I can't remember, where I showed one of these books and I took it apart and showed how it was made. And I also showed the really interesting thing that when you're trying to read the book, it's just not right to left, right to left, right to left, because the text is mixed up with the pictures. And I showed in that YouTube video how to read a book. You follow the text and jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped. And I showed how to read the little special code that told people how to jump. So no problem, I just I learned how to do this. So now we have these books in the shop here. And people sometimes say, what is this? So I pick up the book, I open it for them. And I can't read it for them, but I can show them at least something they can see. Look at this. Do you see how the text here, look at it, jumps from group A to group B. See the little triangle and the circle? And a lot of people, wow, that's so cool. And they'll buy the book. And like, even though they can't read it, don't know what the story is, at least they can see and understand something cool about the book this way, you know. <laughs> so it's become, <laughs> oh, it's become a, like a, a, a sales point for these books when we try and explain them. It's the same as the kabuki thing I mentioned before. We don't know all the details of what's going on inside this thing, but we can see what it is and how it was used and stuff like this. So, and that story of how to read these books, how to jump around from the beginning of the page to the end of the page is so much fun that once people see this, any number of them say, I gotta take one of these, I gotta have one of these. <laughs> so. I think in that sense, we are really bringing value here because until we started telling these stories and showing this kind of thing, nobody knows about this. I would wager that before I made that YouTube video, there wasn't two, three people on the planet, researchers about these books, who even understood how that worked. You know, we discovered this, researched this, looked into this, and we talk about it. And I would wager that not more than a few people on the planet know, know how this works. But now every day people here are seeing this and learning it. So I think we are really bringing value here. <laughs> are the shop's prints in the bins arranged by time, period, theme, whatever? Uh, too many questions. Google, Google. We told Google. We talked to Google. Absolutely. We updated Google. How are things arranged? Iro, iro. They're arranged by different things. Yes, we do. Of course, Edo era prints are kept separate from newer prints, stuff like this. They're arranged sometimes just by size. We put big ones together, small ones together. I mean, there's all kinds of things. A lot of it is arranged by, by uh, series and or designer. For example, Hiroshige Tokaido prints are in a group together, things like this. Overall, the prints in the shop are in two major groups. They're packaged completely differently. The new prints, the ones we publish, or, or things like the Yoshida prints and Doi prints and stuff, they are in one type of packaging. And then the older prints, the prints we didn't make, they are all in a completely different type of packaging. So, And that's the first thing. When somebody comes in and we say, hi, how are you doing? Here's what you're seeing. And we explain that. New prints on this side, Dave carved, blah, 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 blah. On that side, old prints, Showa era back to the old Edo time. So it's easy for people to sort of to understand. There's two major groups here. Is there something going on outside? Outside mic is now off. What is it? Is it construction? I don't know. Some kind of construction noise. Doesn't sound like the vacuum cleaner. It's off now. Has it finished?
What do you think? Can I put it back? I turned it back on. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe even was the ninja boys. They are still doing massive construction to their to their place. There is so much construction around here now, just within a few yards of us. So much construction. Actually, it's not just here. It's it's Japan all over. I know a regular uh, friend and old collector was here a few days ago, um, Albert from uh, from uh, Canada, and uh, I've been following his Instagram as he's going through the country. And uh, there it is. Turn it down again. Okay, sorry. And uh, he posted from Kyoto, and he said over in Kyoto, he said he's never seen as many construction cranes as that in his life, all in one place. So Japan is still, I mean, it's the free money thing, you know, Japan, the interest rates here in Japan are still essentially zero, and it's just, it's free money if you've got projects like that to build, you know, if you're a construction company or a real estate company, whatever, the money is still free, so there's stuff going up all over the place. I can't imagine what would ever happen, and this, this may be one of the reasons why the international exchange rate, the American dollar and the Japanese yen, are doing what they're doing because the bank here is determined to try and keep interest rates as low as possible. Because after 20 years of super low interest rates now, more than 20 years, after 20 years of super low interest rates, probably every person in this country is indebted or has a mortgage or has a construction loan or has something at, you know, 0.1%. And if the interest rates here were allowed to, to go up, 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 probably 90% of the country would be bankrupt. Because all these construction projects that have been done in the last 20 years were financed at like 1 or 2%. My mortgage, which I got in 2000, it started out at, I forget the exact number, it started at 2.3%. I refinanced partway along for 1.7. And then the last two years I refinanced again, it was 1.3. And then I cleared it. But every mortgage and loan in the country is at these kinds of numbers. So if the central bank, whatever, allows interest rates to climb, a lot of people are in a lot of trouble. Well, the bank at the moment, as far as Dave, Dave, a uh, not economist, Dave, a layman economist here, the Japanese bank is desperately trying to keep this as low as possible. There's really conflicting stuff going on here, inflation targets and things like this, you know. It's kind of a chaotic mess. But as I said, it's construction. There's construction everywhere and has been everywhere for so many years now. New buildings everywhere. And I don't know how it was all financed. Which I meant to mention that on the stream this morning. If those of you who got our email flyer earlier this morning, you perhaps didn't notice it, but down at the bottom of the email flyer, there was a picture of a visit. Ayano san and Aya san and I went to visit Hokusai's grave because we were, you know, talking about next year's project. And the collector friend who had been here with us this morning took that picture of us, and I put a link to his Instagram account. 
And that would be cool because he's got some really, really nice pictures of his current travel in Japan. John, you're a photographer. You might be also interested in having a look at this. Uh, I don't know where the link is here. Da, 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 da. Here's, I guess this is it here. Whoops. Okay, here we are. This is a link to a, a recent posting on, on Albert's Instagram account. Oh, somebody's got it. Coffee drinker's got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, it, I gotta qualify this. I've been following Albert's Instagram account for a long time, and it's mostly just like cat pictures. There's really nothing there usually. But get this guy in Japan, put a camera in his hand, and he's okay. <laughs> so there are some very interesting pictures there. So have a peek. And the guy's uh, he's just a casual friend, you know, I don't know him as a deep friend. He's been, a, he started out like this, just like John actually, so bought some prints first or something, visited, became a friend after enough visits, and Albert's in the same position as that. And I think the pictures there are, that's of uh, some very nice work, as, but as far as Dave here can tell. Also, also, there's so much buzzing through my head. John, I meant to talk to you about this. John Becker, photographer, is here this morning. You were talking about getting a lens. You're not coming to Japan this week, but next time you're in Japan, you were talking about preparing a lens and stuff. You know the bars here have what they call nomi hodai, and there's also restaurants called tabe hodai. Nomi hodai is drinking all you can drink. Restaurants, some restaurants are tabe hodai. For two hours, you can all you can eat. All over the world has this available. There is now a service here in Tokyo. I forget what they call it. It's it's camera hodai, camera lens hodai. You buy a subscription for a month or a week or two weeks, whatever, and you can use all of their stuff. Take it out, take it back, take it out, bring it back, take it out, bring it back. It's lens hodai. You've already got that lens, okay, whatever. But anyway, just so you know, there is this service available now. You can, I guess it's an all-you-can-eat camera slash rental service. I, I don't have a link for it right now, I'm sorry. If I'd known I was going to talk about it, I could prepare a link. Maybe somebody Google it. It must have been, it must have been talked about. And I don't know the terms. I don't know the prices or how long or whatever. And I don't know what they've got. But anyway, just, just to, to brain dump here, because you were talking about lenses. <laughs> <laughs> also the other thing that changed yesterday I got up yesterday morning and as usual I said I checked my email at 6 o'clock the second thing I check is the currency exchange rate and we've been enjoying recently the American dollar has been very very high vis-a-vis -vis the Japanese yen it looks like that's coming to an end and if you are in Japan now, traveling with dollars, you better check your rates because they are changing it. Drop, it dropped like five or six cents yesterday and it was down again this morning. So your dollar is sinking fast vis-a-vis -vis the Japanese yen. So the little party we've been having for the past couple of months, it looks like it might be coming to an end. Americans finding things extremely cheap in Japan. I don't know if this is a, a if it's going to bounce back or where it's going to go, but right now it looks like the party's over. It went to 150, and now this morning it was below one. Uh, what was it? it? Was below 140 again? It was 139 or 138 or something this morning.
the Japanese government were trying to value the yen. The yen had become too cheap, making energy costs too expensive. So they were trying to push it back up, not devalue it. A lower yen is great for the exporters. It was great for me while that was happening a few months ago. It's now not so good for me. People from America find my products more expensive now, but for the past couple of months, Birthday. Did I get any birthday presents? The, the, the staff yesterday, they gathered together. They said happy birthday. They gave me a little little cake just, just, to, to, uh, no, just to make sure they, that I knew nothing was forgotten. But I don't get big presents now. I'm 71 years old. So. But yes, people said happy birthday. My birthday present to myself. My birthday present to myself. One year has passed now. I, you remember last year for my birthday, I bought the, the, the pass to go into the uh, fitness center. I bought a fitness pass for myself one year ago at 70. For my birthday, I bought it on my birthday. And we were following the weights and stuff to show. I'm now okay. I'm good for another year. Don't renew it. It renews automatically. It's a month by month by month by month thing. So anyway, the point was I bought myself a very nice present a year ago. And yesterday was the full one year I've been to the fitness center. Yesterday was November the 11th. It now means I've been going there for one year. And we got, of course, I've got to show you the obligatory. Here's the graph. This is one year at the fitness center. <laughs> so we interrupt this programming. <laughs> John's got it. <laughs> Here comes the graph. Actually, this is, we're pretty much finished the graph now because there's no more meaning for this anymore because you can see where we're at. It has become stable. And so much for all those people who said after the first four months, they said, well, you've lost it now, but it's going to be difficult to keep it off. Right? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> So John knew this was coming. Hey, hey. The break in Canada. Yeah, well, it actually the, the thing was stable, you know, whatever. <laughs> so excuse my indulgence, but there we are. So, so, so. But actually, there's another aspect to this. And actually, this is sort of semi serious here. The, the, the weight loss there wasn't really because I was swimming. The weight loss, because I talked about this, it was because I cut out eating extraneous snacks. I had been snacking during the day, and I had been buying dinner. It was, a, it was a dinner, then a salad, then a little something, which I ate before going to bed. So I had cut that out. And that's the difference, I feel, because the weight, the weight loss. Okay, now, it all stabled out then, all through this past summer and autumn. Dave's feeling okay. He's eating the same regimen. His weight is stable. He's exercising. In the last six weeks, things have changed. Things have changed again. I don't know whatever if we can really see it. There's a lot of places in the last six weeks. Look at the last couple of weeks, the last week or so. The weight is sometimes now too low. It's down at 62 or something. I'm not eating enough. And the last few weeks, it's been really like this. People come in the shop. Dave says, how are you doing? They say, hey, Dave, how are you doing? And we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk about this or that or nuclear physics or wood buck rinse or whatever's going on. They leave. Somebody else comes in. Hi, Dave, how are you doing? I'm enjoying the videos. And we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk. At dinner time, I am starving. I eat the normal stuff that I've been eating over the past half a year, and I am still hungry. So I am learning that this calorie thing, it's not just a bit of swimming. It's not just sitting at the computer screen. It's intensive conversation with stuff like this really choose calories. I didn't know this. It's not just being sedentary. It's being mentally parrying and talking and fighting back and forth that choose calories. And if we've had a busy day in the shop here, even if I've done nothing but sit here, I am starved come dinner time. And I've learned that, okay, I can extra do, do, do that extra snack or something with no problem and I'm good to go. So it says, like your burn is burning calories. I guess we've intellectually known this. I mean, what do the statistics say? Your brain uses, what's the number? 40% of your energy or something. I don't know the number. But yeah, it is a real thing. It is a real thing. And if you've been eating exactly the same food each day, 
being fairly by yourself, and then all of a sudden you're busy talking to people every day. It makes a big difference. Chess players, I guess so. I, I can believe this. I can believe it. I can believe it. And it sounds silly. Is this a recommendation for trying to lose weight? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. How to lose weight. Watch what you eat, a bit of exercise, and get really stimulated from your brain. Yeah, standing more. I mean, it is a mix of things. So when we had the print parties, I was running around like crazy. And now here in the shop, yes, I'm standing, talking back and forth. So yes, yes. So there's a lot of things going on here, but just I, this really has been dramatically different. On a day when, when it's been intensive conversation with a bunch of people turning from one to the next and how you doing and, well, thank you very much and let's take a picture together and blah, 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 blah. On those days, I am, two things are different. One, I'm starved at dinner time. And second is when I do get to bed, it's lights out instantly, of course. So yeah, there you have it. Outside, is the outside back to normal, quiet now?
bike down. What's what you talking about? Hmm? Something going on outside. He's getting busier. It's Saturday morning, eh? It's going to be a busy little day here. Absolutely. We're now coming into to the sort of to the end of the year period. It's parties, parties, parties. Sucks. So this is this is out. Our time of year, meaning this is a success time of year. From here on in, it's going to be very, very busy. Yep, the tourists are back. Normal people are here. Uh, the, the fear of the virus and stuff is gone. There's no lockdowns going on. Uh, anyway, at the moment, who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, but at the moment, things are pretty much back to life here. Construction everywhere, activity everywhere. And the, the drinking patterns are, are what they are. Lots more people getting drunk, lots more people getting drunk noisily compared to before. Asakusa used to be sort of staid and boring and uh, old fashioned, and it's really, really changed. You know, the whole mood here is younger. It's, this isn't Shibuya or Harajuku by any means, but the, the mood has changed, and it's now a younger crowd, a less inhibited crowd. Maybe that's just a general change post-pandemic, or it's a, a local change. I don't know, because I don't see other areas. So I should be careful what I say, you know, about, about how much it's this district that's changed. Because it could be life patterns and stuff in Japan have changed. I don't really know. Okay for time. Do I enjoy classic Japanese movies? I don't really know anything about the kind of thing you're mentioning there. I'm sorry. I, I recognize those names as being directors or whatever. I don't, don't know. I don't have any knowledge about those sort of things. I'm sorry. So. I'm a boring guy actually these days. You know, I don't really have any any view outside what I see in my life and our work and what I see outside the front door. 
I showed you that that you know, Instagram a few minutes ago, Albert's Instagram, and uh, I, I browsed through that, and he's been staying in some, he's done some traveling around Japan last 10 days, two weeks, whatever, staying in a bunch of interesting yokans and places like this, and I, I looked at some of his photographs there in the Instagram, and I thought, geez, you know, that's so cool, wow, this guy's so lucky to be able to do this, you know. And then I thought, yeah, right, okay. Why am I saying that? You know, <laughs> he's on the Shinkansen. He goes down there, looks at some interesting places, stays in these beautiful places, enjoys beautiful food. And I'm looking at this in envy. Whatever, life is really strange. You know, really strange. We talked about something similar to that, you know, it would have been a few months ago or something. I had seen YouTube had recommended some video about whatever. I'd watched this video and it was really fast cut. It wasn't Dave's kind of video really. It was it was click, shock, click, shock, wow, fast, move, click, bright, something, click, 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 zoom, zoom, zoom. It was a video about this place and it was wow my god, look at that, look at those sceneries, look at those people, look at that food, look at this. Wow, if only I could be there, you know, and you know the story. It was about Tokyo, you know, it was a video about Tokyo. And I'm like, I could, I watched it drooling and thinking, wow, if only I could go there. <laughs> I live here, you know. So yeah, there's definitely something uh, not really perfect about the way I organize my life these days. Absolutely, kind of obviously. You know. But how to change it and what to do about it, I really don't know. I'm a bit helpless on this. You know. Okay, are we done? Is this the last little piece of this block? Oh, one more. Oops, oops, oops. Have we got time before show and tell? I thought it was finished. What's the time? 12 minutes. <clears throat> Someone's asking about the Hokusai quote. Well, Dave here doesn't read Japanese text in the original. I know that is a very well quoted phrase of Hokusai's. I believe it's from a letter that he wrote to a publisher. I don't know really much more than that. I understand that that is a trustworthy quote. Although, have I seen the original and can I guarantee that? No, but it is a very well uh, uh, passed around, but not just like on, on the internet. It is, a, it is a quote of his that's been known for a long, long time. So yes, as far as I can say, it seems to be uh, what, the feelings he was trying to express, and I can understand it actually too. You don't have to be a hokusai to understand that. As we get older, we get you know better at some stuff, and we also get a clear view of what we were doing before and maybe how bad we think it was. So I can completely accept that quote as being something that a crazy man like that would have said, and he certainly was a crazy man. You know, crazy in the sense of crazy intense on what he was doing, you know. I mean, I, I share that, so I get it, you know.
Okay, I think now all the cutting is done on this one. Let's have a look. Next step on this block, let's zoom out a bit, pull out, push in. I think, unless I'm mistaken, all the cutting now of the red zones, they're chopped. I've outlined and gone around all the red zones. Those of you who have seen this process before know what's next. I'm going to get my deep chisels and my hammer, and we're going to carve away a lot of the waste wood. A lot of that's going to happen off stream because I don't want to be doing that noisily on the stream. So today's Saturday. Before Monday's stream, I will cut away a bunch of this waste wood, and then on Monday, we will see a bunch of the clearing going on. It'll be crunch, crunch time on Monday. Good, we've cleared it well. So I had a good balance today between mindlessly chatting with you guys and putting knife to wood, and it's worked out perfectly. Okay, okay. Japanese printmaking, please take up John's offer. I don't know, I'll, I will read the chat later. If I could change one thing about how you made a passion into a business, what would it be? I would like to be a better manager. I would like to be I would like to be managing this transition better. I the idea is to back me out of the business and hire people to do it, which we are doing, but I am not managing the transition well. I am still too much involved personally at every step of the business, so as a result I get no free time, no time off, no nothing. So I would like to do that better. Okay, let's look at some show and tell. I have nothing dramatic to show you this morning. We're just going to grab another couple of prints from this book and chat a little bit about how they were made and what was going on. Mindlessly chatting. Well, what did I say? Did I insult somebody? What did I say? I was mindlessly carving. <laughs> whatever if I said something. <laughs> mindlessly chatting, whatever. This is not deep intellectual conversation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so... How about, am I in trouble? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, where were we? We've come through album number one. We've come through album number two. We've seen this. We've seen this. We've come to album number three, which is the album I made. The album I made in 1992. 2001. This is the 2001 album of my prints. We looked at a couple of these. Oh, I know what's next. And what's next is a fun one. Remember the pattern, ladies and gentlemen, remember the pattern. The fifth print every year is a fan. One, two, three, four, five in the first one. The fifth print became a fan shape. I have no idea how this tradition started. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth one became a fan shape. There was more traditions, you know. The second print was always the print of a bijinga, a lady. The second print was always a Bijinga, a lady. The, the series actually was quite well calculated and thought out. The second one was a lady. The fifth one was a fan. They went through, I know, there was lots of patterns. There's more. We'll talk about them as we go forward. Anyway, the fifth one was a fan print always. And with this one, I went to town. O over, over the top. Always, always over the top. Too much, too much, too much. This is a Dave Bull quote, original, unquote. Meaning, it's a Dave Bull constructed print. It's not art. Uh, what I mean, whatever. We, we've had this kind of conversation before. I'm not an artist in the sense of you give me a piece of paper and I can create something that didn't exist before. But I can build things given the pieces. And this is, a, as I said, it's an original wood bar print. It didn't exist before I did it. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a fan like this upstairs. It's in the box somewhere. We had a fan, and it was probably just a fan with nothing on it. I also have a collection of Senshafuda prints, meaning, we you know, the Senshafuda prints, the designs that are about a one by five imagery. And I had the idea of making a woodblock print that would show a fan that had been decorated with small woodblock prints. So when I say it's a construction, what I mean is I didn't draw something with drawing artistic skill. Ment intellectually had the idea, let's do this, let's build it, let's build it, let's build it. So you saw what I'm trying to get at. I mean, this is an original print of mine, but it's not art. 
it's put together with it's it's there's people who build houses and then there's architects. I'm not an architect, but I can build houses if you, you get what I mean. And because I'm a control freak, I went again too far. It's I think it's 32 colors. Just it was damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Didn't matter because I was doing all the carving, I was doing all the printing. It didn't have to be passed on to somebody else. And that's why this print is not in our Moko Hong Kong catalog. A lot of the other prints you've seen me look at in these Sudimono albums, the prints have ended up in our catalog here because we give the blocks to our printers. They can print it. The amount of time it takes to print it, plus all the costs, means a reasonable selling price. This one doesn't work like that. There are so many colors. I don't know the number. It's 32 or 34 or something like that. I don't know. Gradation up, gradation down, gradation up, gradation up. Look at this. Even the cartouche here has two gradations, one down and one up. It didn't matter because I was doing it by myself. But now, to take this block set, give it to a printer here, they would have to spend so much time on this that the print would end up being 150 bucks in the shop or something in order to pay the printer and everybody else properly. But nobody's going to pay that much for this. So the time it takes to make it and the money people are willing to pay for it don't add up here. They added up for me because I didn't get paid for it. Look at this. We have a tatami pattern. The fan is sitting on the tatami and it's three-dimensional. So how many of these exist? I made about 200 sets of the Surimono, of each of the Surimono albums. And Surimono albums number one, two, and three, the ones you've seen so far, are all gone. I still have, we still have stock of Surim Surimono albums four and five, the ones we're going to see later on. They're still here in our inventory. But this one, no. I made 200 copies of it, and out they went. Look at this gradation. <laughs> How many blocks? Karen, I don't know. I don't really know. It, this is years ago. I haven't seen these blocks for, for 22 years, so I can't answer. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'd consider the possibility of thinking about purchasing such a print. <laughs> it depends on the price, obviously. I'm really happy with it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful object. But it's totally now, it's totally, you know, uh, what's the word? In, in, it doesn't match, uh, uneconomic. And this too, this is Doi, our friend and associate, Doi Toshikazu, who works with me here. He's, he's sick at home these days. But uh, he has a huge Senshafta collection. And this Senshafta is a personal one he commissioned from a woodblock print company before he met me with his own name on it. So because I was borrowing other Senshafta from his collection, I put his name into the middle of it. So he was super proud. There's a woodblock print out there in the world with his name on it. Yeah, impractical, I guess. So, so, so. Anyway, there it is. I'm very happy with it. And of course, as with all the prints in the albums those days, it got my signature and it got our, my barren seal, which is pushed from the top and find it, Dave, where are we? Here, pushed from the top and pulled from the bottom. So this is not normal woodblock printing. The seal mark here is done with a like a legal seal. You put this, you squeeze the paper in between the seal. Very nice. Price performance. So so and then as we've seen in this series as we've moved forward, we've had before a similar feeling. What we've done is, you, you've seen it before, every time I make a spectacular print that takes a lot of time and has many blocks, the next print is much simpler. So instead of four weeks, four weeks, it was like six weeks and two weeks or something like this. I took a lot of time for one print and then the next one had to be something that didn't take so much time because I had to fit them all into one year. And so it was with that series. The next print in the set 
had to be something I could do much more quickly. And away we've got it. It's three blocks. And this was the next one that year. And this is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Somewhere out there in the world, there is a screen painting by Ogata Korin, which is a copy of some previous artist's design. It was the moon and crows and stuff like this. Then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some publisher, I have no idea who it was, some publisher in the late Meiji took it as, and adapted it and made it into a woodblock print. And then later, another publisher in Taisho, there's a whole chain of these, adapting and changing it as they went. So I copied the third one, the original screen, some publisher's copy, the Taisho copy, and I copied that one pretty much the same. So the original of this, nobody even really knows now what the original of this. We just know it as crows and moon, and perhaps Ogata Korin was the originator. And if, whatever, I think I'm typical, you see this, you like it. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to make it as a woodblock print. And if you know my history, back in Canada before I came to Japan, I did try and do this. And in fact, this, is, this would be instructive. Let me find a link here. Before I knew what I was doing, I made a reproduction of this print. And it is so bad. Let me try and find it. It's on my, it's on my woodblock com. Where are we? Can somebody find it? Here, 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 here. One printmaker's journey, where I've been, where I'm going. Just give me a minute here. This is, this is, this is uh, bad. Print number three, print number four, print number five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where is it? Here we are, print number nine. Copy image address. Here we go. Here we go. You might not be able to see this. This is not, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Does the link work? It's not a secure server. It might give you a, an a error message. Modi-san, again, again, again. Wow, we've got to stop meeting like this. This is the second time this year. <laughs> Ananda, Ananda, Ananda. Come in where they can see what you're doing. <laughs> Look at this lady. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Actually, that's too. A couple of years ago, too, you did. You brought some flowers to show yeah, yeah. on my birthday. I remember this. Thank you very much. Hi, hi. Three. You are wearing masks. I'm wearing a mask. So, so, so. Excuse me. Yeah, well, look away from me. Excuse us. Bingo. Hey, Modi san. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come in and say so. Let me see. Let me see. See who you are. Come just a bit closer. This is Mori san, Chiho Mori san. She does uh, one or two or three days a, w a month for us because she's got a real job. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Their joke is, hey, I was, we were talking before about girlfriends. Oh, I don't have any girlfriends. Like, <laughs> Every day is a different lady poking yeah. her nose. <laughs> so relax, the lady has got her own, <laughs> her own life, not me. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. My brother keeps making the same stupid joke. Dave has a harem, and it ain't like that, believe me. <laughs> so, Hey, welcome. Thank you very much. Moisan, there is something. Before we start today, oh. excuse me a minute, guys. Before we start today, we put up uh, this morning, we sent an a email oh. sort of announcement about different prints for, that are on sale and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people have been ordering prints from the flea market. Mm -hmm. And you know the system. The email comes in here, mm -hmm. and we have to take them out of stock. Look at it. There's maybe 10 or 12 emails. Okay. So before we open this morning, we do have to find those prints oh, okay. and take yeah. them out of stock. So okay. thank you. <laughs> She's a nice lady and smart. My God, smart, smart. We've got a good staff here for the most part, you know. I, I sort of, I'm, when, you, when you pick people and when they come, Dave has, you know, if, if it's, the people send resumes and stuff. I don't even look at the resume. I don't care. Where did you go to college? Where did you go to school? How old you are? I don't look at resumes, period. All the people who are working here, I've never seen their resume. I don't even know how old they are. What Dave chooses by, I've got my list of things that I want in a person. And number one, the person we're talking to, thinking about working here, number one, must be cheerful. 
that's it. Number one, number one, they must be cheerful. If they're kind of a person that's going to sit there or be a little bit gloomy or you think they're moody or whatever, get out of here. They've got to be cheerful. Relax. The cake is okay. The cake is fine. That's number thing. What I want is cheerful. And second, they've got to demonstrate some sort of like competence at the thing that we're trying to do. If they're going to be in the prince, you know, whatever. They've got to be sort of competent. Now, you don't know this at the beginning when you're interviewing somebody. But you can get a general feel for, do they, you know, can they answer questions properly? Can they do this? Can they do that? What I want next, what I want number three from the people who are going to work here, there is no number three. All I want are those two things. Cheerfulness must be there and an appearance of competence, the ability to actually do something. And that's all I care about. There is no number three. Age, I don't care. Gender, I don't care. It's a joke. We pay everybody the same, whatever. There's nothing like that here. I don't care where you went to school. I don't care. We've got a people who are like not straight here in our staff. It's irrelevant to us. We don't care. Not all the people working here are Japanese. And I mean, not even like as in David's a foreigner Japanese. I don't care about any of that stuff. Anyway, 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 sidetrack. Over. It's 9.30 now. We've looked at two prints. We didn't, there was something else I wanted to explain about that one, but sidetrack, got sidetrack, got sidetrack. Yeah, carvers or printers are different, of course. Carvers or printers. They're working in their own home. Kubota-san, actually Kubota-san is a cheerful guy, but I didn't hire him because he's cheerful. He's, he's competent, of course. I, okay, I qualify this. When I, when I said those two things, cheerful one, and I'm talking about people who work here in the company, in and around doing stuff. The outside craftsmen are hired on one point only, how capable they are of doing the carving or printing. Of course, I'm sorry if I was confused about this. Okay, okay, okay. It looks like my lunch is set for today here. Happy birthday, Dave. <laughs> I am not going to eat this on stream. Okay, thank you very much. It's today's Saturday. I'll be back here again two days on Monday morning. Let's put it the outside. And I will be probably uh, carving the same thing, the surfer girl blocks. We're just going to be doing another small step. Chocolate beard incoming at lunchtime. Not now, at lunchtime. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's put up the outside just for a minute. It is a sunny day. It's a sunny, it'll, it's got sunny with cloudy patches, I think, is the forecast for today. Looks like most people still are masked up, of course. We've had no problems here in the shop. 99% of the visitors have been masked. We've had one and only one instance so far of people coming in the shop with no masks. And when they were asked to put a mask on, they swore at us and left. There's been one and only one incidence of that in the past six weeks. Other than that, everybody has been happy and polite and masked up. Okay, I'm out of here now. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye for now.